Is this thing on? <gasps> Yay, the panel is starting. <laughs> hey guys, I hope you're having an amazing cosplay day. Thank you so much for joining my panel. I am Allison Tabitha. I am a cosplayer and I'm going to be answering some of your questions that you sent me about makeup and I'm so excited. So let's get started. First question. My question would be tips for mapping out contouring as it were, how to look at my face and their face and know what contouring to adjust to make them more similar. That is a great question. The way I usually map out faces is I look at the character and then I look at my face and I try to spot the differences. I would start with your eyes as like the main focus of where things are gonna go. Like think maybe the character has really high cheekbones look at the character and look at the distance between their eye and the top of their cheekbone and then look at your cheekbone and look at the distance between your eye and the top of your cheekbone and maybe you'll be able to decipher what differences you have so you can try to meet somewhere in the middle maybe you can get it like super close almost exact replica but i always aim to like try to meet in like a middle happy place um, because I don't think you're ever gonna look exactly like a character because everyone's DNA is different and there's so many different factors that go into a face shape and the distance between features and like the size of a head and everything is just so different between so many different people so just try to match it as closely as possible but trying to meet like somewhere in the middle is I think a more realistic way to approach it because I don't think it's ever gonna look exact. I know with my Maleficent cheekbones, I decided to opt out of using prosthetics. So I decided to meet somewhere more in the middle where my cheekbones still look really like sharp and high and like I highlighted them and contoured them, but I didn't commit fully to like using prosthetics on my face because I didn't like the way they looked and they were a lot of extra trouble and they cost a lot of money and I wanted to save time and money and I wanted it to look a little more seamless. So I just went with my natural face and then just added a heck ton of makeup. Um, but I love the results and that's a really good example of recreating something that looks very dramatic and it's a big change to my face, but it wasn't an exact replica of the character. It was more somewhere in the middle of my face and their face and it was still really powerful change to my features. And the same goes for like use your eyes and what is the difference in distance between your eyes and your eyebrow versus the character's eyes and the character's eyebrow? Maybe you're gonna have to lower your eyebrows. Maybe you're gonna have to raise your eyebrows. I think just use your eyes as like the central locator of features and then check the distance between your eyes and everything else. You can't really like reposition your nose or your mouth on your face. Um, well, not much anyway. So I would focus on like the rest of the features when it comes to like distancing and then when it comes to your nose, attack that as if it's its own entity. Like just look at the character's nose and how it looks on their face and then look at the nose on your face. Maybe the character has like a shorter nose than you. You can always add some contour under your nose and the shadow under your nose will make your nose look shorter. Or maybe the character has a longer nose than you. You can actually add a shadow under the tip of your nose and that'll make your nose look a little lower, especially if you like highlight the bottom of your nose too. So there's different ways to create the illusion of like changing your features to match the character without actually doing it. But I always try to aim for somewhere in the middle. I think that's the sweet spot. Obviously the closer, the more accurate it's gonna look, but um, don't beat yourself up if it doesn't look exactly like a character. Just, it's all like an illusion and um, people are looking more at the overall change and like the dramatic effect that you can create with makeup and that's the impressive part i think a lot of people think i look exactly like a character and if you actually looked at my face and my bone structure side by side with the actual actors it doesn't look identical it just it's impossible unless i were to wear like a full face prosthetic and I wouldn't, my skin would just suffocate and I don't want that. I'm acne prone, I have sensitive skin, what can I say? <laughs> anyway, just try to look at the character and look at your face and spot the differences and fill in the blanks, basically. I think it's a really hard thing to explain, so I hope my answer is helpful. Um, I'll probably add some visuals, so hopefully those are helpful as well. Let's get on to the next question. I would love to know how you figure out shading your face to look like the character. 
that's also a great question and I think I answered a lot of that question in the previous question it's mostly just spotting the differences and filling in blanks and really just analyzing the differences and features on somebody's face I always try to start with looking at the overall face shape like I'll start with the cheekbones and then like the forehead and then like the jawline so you have your base and then I focus on the eyes a lot. I think the eyes are very important. Um, they can be super convincing because that's where people's eyes are drawn to when they look at your photos or your videos. They make eye contact with you. So if you get the eyes really close, the rest of your face just kind of falls into place. It's like a really cool magic trick. <laughs> And after I do the eyes, I like to look at the lips and the nose and say the lips are much thinner than my lips and I'll put foundation over my lips and then I'll draw them on much thinner or say the lips are fuller than my lips and then I'll overdraw my lips and I'll make them look fuller and puffier and then sometimes the corner of the mouth looks different or they have little dimples or it's a lot longer. So. There's different ways you can really recreate the look of a character and I think it comes down to studying each individual feature of their face instead of like the overall face because I think that could get overwhelming because you're like well they look like that and I look like this and I look nothing like that but when you minimize it to each individual feature it's much easier to like break down and try to recreate the different aspects of somebody's face. I really hope that answers your question. Let's get on to the next question. I know others have said this, but some tips on transformation makeup would be great. I think I just answered that question in both the other answers, but another tip, if you really want to be transformative, pick a character with heavy makeup. Like, if you want to like wow people, it, body paint, face paint, that's always like a really dramatic way to go. So if your goal is to be like very transformative, um, if I cosplay someone like Padme, people aren't going to be like, wow, that makeup is like insane because there's only so much I can actually do because she like looks like she's not really wearing any makeup to begin with. So I don't really have much to help me transform into her. I can try to make my features look naturally more similar to her. but. I'm very limited to like dramatic changes that I can make. But when I do a character like the Joker, I get completely lost in that character. Or when I do someone like Mystique, because I have like, my whole face is blue, my eyes are bright yellow, and then I have scales all over it. So another character that like, I get completely lost in. And that's not to say that only characters that use face paint are the ones you can create like a dramatic transformation with. There's plenty of characters with like really heavy makeup looks or striking features that are like stand out that you can recreate and really be transformative. So, so if you apply some of the tips that I address in previous answers, I think you can really create something really transformative and fun and cool. I hope that helps. What is the best way to achieve a five o'clock shadow beard effect on a woman? This goes for men and women, anyone without a beard that wants to create like stubble or five o'clock shadow. I'm going to be demonstrating some different ways to do that right now. I'm gonna go ahead and show you two ways that you can do this. First, I put some darker eyeshadow on a big bristle brush. Then I very gently pat the eyeshadow around my lower face where a beard would grow. You can use a lighter eyeshadow if you want it even less noticeable or if you need to match a lighter hair color. It's a very easy way to get a 5 o'clock shadow effect. Another way you can do it is by applying some adhesive to where you would want the beard to grow. Then take some loose hair and press it to the adhesive.
Then you pull off the extra hairs and give it a trim. And that's another way that you can create a stubble or five o'clock shadow effect. I hope that helps. I really hope that was helpful. Let's get on to the next question. Best way to attach a fake beard. Any tips for that? Yes, I do have some tips for that. I've worn a fake beard for years. Jack Sparrow was my first costume ever. I started when I was like 14 and I wore at least till I was 18 or 19, maybe 20. So I have a lot of experience attaching a fake beard and experimenting with different types of glue and adhesives and different ways to apply it. One way that you can do this if you have like a really specific type of beard that isn't like super average shape is you can apply the hairs individually to your face and glue them on. This is a very long process and I have done it before, but it makes me kind of sad because you put all this extra work into applying hair on your face and then at the end of the day, you literally just wash it off and it's gone. Um, you can't save it because since you glued them on individually, when you get them off, they kind of just like fall apart and then it's like goodbye, hard work, you're gone forever. Um, so <laughs> I personally prefer using lace beards. You can find them online. You can find them on like theatrical makeup sites sometimes. I know there's some on Amazon. They're just lace beards. They're just like lace wigs for your head, but they're for your face. Um, they're very useful because not only are they kind of seamless, they look really natural, but the edges blend because of lace and then you can attach them and take them off and then reapply them. And as long as you like, keep them pretty clean and the adhesive doesn't kick up too much, you can use them quite a bit. And I think it's a really beneficial way to save time and energy. And it's really nice, especially with Jack Sparrow, I would need to like braid the beard and like add the beads. And the fact that I could do that just once and then keep reusing the same beard and not have to restyle it every single time I wanted to wear the costume was very helpful. As far as my favorite adhesives that I use to apply beards, I used to use spirit gum. I've even dabbled in using like liquid latex and eyelash glue. Spirit gum was probably my second favorite, but it really irritated my skin. And honestly, within an hour, it would be peeling off, especially around your mouth because you're talking and you're eating and you're laughing. And then there's like a lot of humidity because your breath. Prosade is a much stronger adhesive. It is for skin, it's for prosthetics and stuff. So I definitely recommend using Prosade for beards because they're around your mouth and it's always moving. And it was funny though, because when I wear a beard, I'll like stick to only eating like French fries or foods I can like slide straight into my mouth when I do like <laughs> or like drink through straws because like I don't want to like take a big bite out of like a burger or something because then I have to stretch my mouth and then like the stuff starts peeling off so um, beards are always kind of a struggle but um, they're really fun to wear especially if you don't naturally grow a beard it's just fun to have a mustache every now and then so <laughs> I hope that was helpful um, let's get on to the next question I'm planning a costume that needs grayscale style makeup with sepia tones. Any product suggestions or advice for doing this? That is such a cool question and I am so excited to see that costume, so please send me a picture. I personally have never done grayscale or sepia. That is so cool, but I would probably approach it the same way I would approach any body paint. I would start with like a light gray base and then I would use a darker gray for shading, maybe some blacks for like really dramatic shading to like really make it pop and maybe whites for highlights for like a black and white grayscale look. But if you're doing sepia tones, I would do it the same way, but just slightly modify the shade to add like warmer tones, like instead of just gray, maybe mix a little like tans and maybe instead of just a dark gray, add like little browns in it. to so, like just warm up the color and add a little more of a sepia tone to it. Basically, like if you were to like take the colors from a sepia photo and see the different shades, just match those shades and apply them to your face like you would any other face paint. I think that would be the way I would approach it. And as far as products I would use for this, I majorly work with Mayron makeup. I use their water activated face paint. 
but I really, I think there are just plenty of face paints out there that would work for this. Maybe you can even use foundation and maybe you can do highlights and shadings with grays to add like grayscale effects. I think just experiment and hopefully my advice can assist you in that experimentation. How do I get even coverage of white face paint? This can be a struggle for a lot of us, so you are not alone. I think it really depends on what type of white face paint you're doing. Like say a character like Harley Quinn for me, I did a much more muted white face paint instead of like a stark white. She does have a really like almost clownish white skin tone, but also it can pass as someone who's just like super, super pale. So instead of using like a really thick face paint, I went with a more like thin application of a cream white makeup and I blended that in and I dabbed it on my face and I almost applied it like I would my own foundation. And then I went over it with a matte white powder to like really blend in any blotchiness and it seemed really effective. But if you're talking like a really bold white face paint like I did with the Joker, I apply that like I would any face paint, like I would for Mystique, like I would for Nebula. I apply a water activated face paint with a sponge and I just dab it on my face in layers. I don't smear it or wipe it. I know some people do apply it with a brush and it is effective so you can try it that way too. But for me personally, the way it works best is if I use a sponge, dab it on in layers, let that layer dry, and then just build up on the layers and fill in any patches as I go. Usually it can take anywhere from three to four different layers, and it's all about just like keep evening it out, pat it on lightly all over your face until you're happy with the results. And I have a lot of tutorials on my YouTube channel showing how I apply face paint, so if you wanna like look at those and practice, feel free. I hope they can help you out. That's why I make them. Um, let's move on to the next question. Do you have any advice for setting my makeup so it doesn't budge? <laughs> I think we've all been there where we had like this long day at a con and we have sweat. We have run around. Our face is getting greasy and oily, just, you know, natural stuff. And then we look in the mirror at the end of the night and our face is like shifted <laughs> or it's like melting off here and there, um, maybe it's a little blotchy. Um, definitely, I have been there. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. So now there are ways that I try to avoid that at cons now that I've experienced it more than enough times. And the thing I usually use is a translucent setting powder, which you can get at the drugstore. I personally use the Mayron setting powder just because it works with my face paint really well. And then it actually works with my natural, like everyday makeup really well too. So I just stick to that. But there's tons of different translucent setting powders that you can get. I also know that people use setting sprays. I've tried using setting sprays too. My face and my skin is like really oily after a few hours and setting sprays kind of already had so much moisture in them that I think for me setting powders really helps like not only keep my makeup in place but it actually helped the shine of like my naturally oily skin so you could go with either depending on your skin like a setting spray or a setting powder those are very helpful and I have another tip because sometimes it's unavoidable to keep your makeup from budging you might sweat a lot you might be like rubbing your face with stuff, like your wig might rub across your face, maybe like you accidentally tap it or somebody brushes you with their wing during the con and then like your face is a little smudgy. Um, I think it's always smart to have like a little makeup kit hidden somewhere on your costume or if you have a bag, just slip it in there just so you can touch things up. I know sometimes I like to have something for under my eyes and over my eyes because sometimes the uh, mascara will like get on your eyes after so many hours of blinking and talking and maybe crying because you get super excited because somebody's wearing a costume that you just love or there's a dog and then you just start crying because you love dogs. Um, but that brings up a good point to invest in some waterproof um, eyeliner and mascara. That has been a lifesaver for me. Um, you can also find waterproof like lipstick and stuff and I don't own any myself But I know there is waterproof foundation out there as well So you can keep your whole face waterproof that stuff tends to stick on super long So my tips for keeping your makeup from budging would be setting powder or setting spray Waterproof foundation and then also bring some makeup as a touch-up kit whenever you're on the con floor So if something pops up you can just touch it up and you're good to go <laughs> I hope that was helpful. 
Do you have experience with costume lenses? Do you have a favorite brand? I do have a few years of experience with costume lenses. I have probably worn 200 pairs, um, roughly. <laughs> I am going to put a disclaimer. I am not a doctor and I do recommend you speak to an eye doctor before getting lenses because your vision is precious, your eyeballs are precious, take care of them, do not put them at risk unnecessarily. I just thought that was worth mentioning before answering this question. I usually get my contacts from Unique So, but there are so many different brands on that website. I don't have a specific brand that I usually lean towards. I really like to read reviews to get an idea of the quality and stuff and see if anybody has issues with them before I buy them. And sometimes reviews are available, so I will just buy them and test them myself. I do have some tips though. If your contacts are painful at all, take them out of your eyes. Do not wear them. Do not suffer through it for the con. I do not care if you think it completes your costume. If it is hurting your eyes, take it out of your eyes and do not put it back in until you figure out why it is hurting your eyes because contact lenses should not hurt your eyes. Do not wear them if they hurt. There are a few things that it could be. You could be wearing the lens inside out, which means there's a printed side with the color on it, and that side is against your eye, and it is not smooth, so do not wear it if it's inside out. That could be another thing. You could have some sort of debris, like maybe a flake of glitter, maybe a grain of dirt, maybe sand, makeup, anything. If that's in, take your lens out, clean it off gently between your fingers with clean solution, put, put your lens back in the case, rinse it off with clean, fresh solution, and then try to put it back in your eye. And if it doesn't hurt, you're good. If it still hurts, take it out. It can also have a minor tear. You might not even be able to see that tear, but that is so dangerous. It can scratch your eye. You do not want that. So if it hurts, that is a very likely thing that could be happening with your lens. Take it out, don't wear it. Another thing it could be is it doesn't fit your eyeball and it could be squeezing your eye and causing pain because your eyes might be bigger than the lenses are made for. Eyeballs do come in different shapes and different sizes, so lenses aren't universally gonna be comfortable on everybody. So if it hurts, take it off. One more tip, it might just be a really low quality lens and you're just gonna have to contact the company, try to get your money back. If you can't get your money back, I'm sorry, but don't wear it. Eyes are precious, your vision is precious, it's a gift, cherish it, take care of it. I know contacts can be like a cool element of a costume, but remember they're only like this big. They're not gonna take away from the fact that you have this awesome costume on, so if you don't wear them, no one cares. Just don't mess up your eyes. <laughs> I know that answer might seem like, don't wear lenses. I'm not trying to scare you out of wearing lenses. I think if they're worn safely and you know how to do them right and take care of them and keep them clean, they can be a really cool element to a costume. Just try to find sites that are reputable. I use Unique So. You can ask other cosplayers what they use and just be gentle on your eyes. They're little precious babies that we have to take care of. Um. <laughs> Next question. How do you apply a bald cap so seamlessly? Witchcraft. <laughs> I think you're talking about my Nebula costume. I'm actually not that experienced with applying bald caps. And honestly, not long before I did that costume, I did try applying bald caps and I'm like, wow, I just suck at this, I guess. Um, and I realized it was just the quality of the bald cap. Some bald caps are just cheaper or even if they're not cheaper they were like made cheaply and they're just really thick and really hard to apply and hide the seam and then there's some bald caps that are just much better quality and when you put them on they blend really well with your forehead and stuff and and i think it really just comes down to the quality of the bald cap because i think a beginner with a really good bald cap can have really decent results and just like the facial hair, I do use Prosade for the edges of bald caps. It glues it down really well and it holds it very well. And you can actually put it over it as well to blend the edges because it can build up and get kind of thick. 
So that would be my advice for bald caps. You don't have to be great at it. And don't beat yourself up if it doesn't like go perfectly the first time you try it. Just try new techniques, try different bald caps and keep practicing until you're happy with your results. Next question. What advice do you have for a beginning crossplayer? I'm gonna assume you're talking about a female dressing as a male character. And honestly, I think the advice I would give you for that is the same advice I'd give with the first answer. It's mostly just spotting the differences between you and a character and trying to meet somewhere in the middle. Say you're a girl and you don't have a beard. If the character's a male and they do have a beard, that already gives you a really easy way to be convincing as that character because it's such a dramatic change. But sometimes there's male characters with feminine features and what that comes down to is really just spotting the differences and studying their face and trying to recreate their features as best as you can on your own face. And it really doesn't matter too much about the character's gender or your gender. It's mostly just about capturing the character's essence. I wouldn't say David Bowie in Labyrinth had the most masculine looking makeup, there were elements of his face that were not gender specific, like the aging of the skin and stuff. I drew like bags under my eyes and lines around my mouth. It was mostly just trying to recreate his particular features and dress as that character, however they personally look. I honestly, when I dress as a character, I don't really think of, oh, this is a guy character and I'm gonna be a girl dressing as a guy. I'm just like, I love Jack Sparrow. I wanna be Jack Sparrow. <laughs> And I approach it very similarly to how I would any female character out there. So I don't know if I have advice that is like unique to female turning to male character, male turning to female character. It's all about looking at the character and looking at yourself and spotting the differences between the two and meeting somewhere in the middle and creating this beautiful recreation of the character and having fun because that's what cosplay is all about isn't it <laughs> i think that is all the questions we have for today thank you guys so much for asking the questions i had so much fun doing this panel i really appreciate you tuning in and i hope you enjoy the rest of cosplay day bye